Good morning. So, today, thank you. Thanks very much. So let's. Thank you very much. It's a lot of applause when you guys do all the work. <laughs> we got a, a great day today, but uh, before we get started, I just wanted to mention something. Um, one of the great inspirations to me and a lot of the folks at Apple was Akio Morita at Sony. Uh, he passed away this Sunday at the age of, of 78, and uh, while he was leading Sony, they invented the whole consumer electronics marketplace. First transistor radio, Trinitron Television, first consumer VCR, Walkman, audio CD. The innovation that they brought to the marketplace was staggering. And as he expressed his love for his fellow species through his products and his company, we've certainly been very inspired by it. And I hope that some of the things that we're going to be doing today would make him smile. So let's get started. First thing we'd like to do today, we're going to announce Macintosh OS 9 the next major release of the Macintosh operating system. We're announcing it today. It's got 50 new features in it. It is the best internet OS ever, ever. And there's nine internet power tools that I'd like to talk about a little bit, and we're going to show you some of them. The first one is Sherlock 2. When we shipped Mac OS 8.5 a year ago, it had Sherlock 1 in it, and it was amazing. You can type in natural language queries, like why is the sky blue. Sherlock 1 will parse them and send them out to multiple search engines on the web simultaneously. And as they send back results, Sherlock will dynamically rank them for relevance and present them in one window. And you can click on any of the results and go directly to that web page and find what you're looking for. So you can be searching 20, 30 website, web search engines simultaneously. It's amazing. We've gone much further with Sherlock 2. The first thing we've done is Sherlock has a plugin architecture, and very rapidly people have wrote over 200 plugins for Sherlock to not just search the most popular web search sites, but even some of the more obscure ones. The problem was you had to go down this long list and click which ones you were interested in searching for a particular query. We've now put channels on Sherlock 2. So you can have groups of target sites, but we've gone much further because we've made channels not only for news and information, but for people to go out and search the LDAP servers and find you how to get in touch with people on the internet. And the biggest one, of course, is shopping, e-commerce. You can now type in what you're looking for and search all of the e-commerce sites and come back and have the items, the price, and the availability. You can sort by price, you can sort by availability, you can sort by merchant. You click and it'll take you right to that page to buy the merchandise. It's incredible. And it is, so Sherlock is maturing beyond just your internet search detective to your personal shopper on the internet. It's astounding. Second, multiple users. How many of you have used a Mac at home or in the classroom or in a small business where you're sharing it with other people and when you come back to your Mac, it isn't your Mac anymore. It's got somebody else's internet browser preference, their home page, home directory preference, uh, you know, their, their home page preference, et cetera, et cetera. Their desktop pattern. And you have to reset everything back, and of course, so do they when they get back to the Mac. Well, now, Macintosh keeps track of multiple users. You log in with a password, and boom, all your settings and preferences are restored. Also, you can keep your files private from other people and only let them see what you want them to see. So multiple users. Now, if you're going to log in with a password, though, wouldn't it be great if you never could forget your password? You could use your voice. We have voice print password in Mac OS 9. You just speak a phrase, and it lets you in. Now, on the internet, it seems like everything needs a password. Every site, every, uh, everything you do needs a password. Every email server, and you go nuts keeping track of all these passwords. Sometimes you like to type in your favorite one you can remember easy and somebody's already got it. Well, we've built in a feature, an amazing feature called the keychain into Mac OS 9. You can take any passwords and put them on the keychain. And then when you log in with your one password, it activates all of them. 
So if you need any of the other passwords, boom, the OS takes care of it for you. And these are stored in a very secure way. So one password unlocks everything with the keychain. Auto updating. We are constantly improving our operating system and our third parties are constantly improving their drivers and we want you to have the most up-to-date operating system every second of every day. We've built auto updating into Macintosh OS 9 and so your OS can be, you can have the most current version of the OS every single day. <clears throat> On the internet, on the internet, when you're sending files around, wouldn't it be great if you could encrypt them so you know that nobody can read them? Even on your home system or your work system, wouldn't it be nice if you could encrypt certain files on your hard disk so you knew that they were secure? That is now all built into OS 9 with a really simple UI and extremely industrial strength encryption technology. Internet file sharing. Now that you've got these nice encrypted files, wouldn't it be nice to share them on the internet super easy? Well, you know how Ma in Ma with Macintosh on a local area network, you can set up file sharing and it's really easy, drag and drop? That now all works completely over the internet. So you can have drive, drag and drop file sharing between Macintoshes around the world on the internet. And the same thing, in our design and publishing market, a lot of our customers use AppleScript to automate their workflows extremely powerful things and those automations work on a single computer or over lots of computers on a local area network. Well now those computers don't have to be limited to the local area network. You can have computers here, computers in New York, computers in Tokyo, all working with AppleScript all in a very secure way so that you can automate workflows around the globe on the internet with Mac OS 9. This is going to be huge with our publishing customers who have service bureaus and endpoints all around the world. And lastly, network browser. You can now go on the network and find internet services and FTP sites and things like that as easy as you can find printers on a local area network with the new network browser. And so these are nine internet power tools that are among the 50 new features of Mac OS 9. And what I'd like to do now is invite Phil Schiller, our Vice President of Worldwide Product Marketing up on stage to give us a demo. Phil? Thanks everyone, this, this is really great to be able to stand up here and show you a brand new OS and some of the great features that are seen for the first time in Mac OS and really make Mac OS 9 the best internet OS. And we all live on the internet now every day and it's just gonna improve the quality of our life surfing the web. I have here a Power Mac running Mac OS 9. I'd like to show you just a few of those power tools and how powerful and simple they are to use. Well, I have to start with the most powerful of all. Sherlock 2. Now I'm sure many of you use Sherlock already today. Most of our customers all use Sherlock now to search on the web as one of the powerful tools. And just like before, there are all these great plugins for all the search engines around the web and you can just type in a natural query and Sherlock will help you find your information really fast. So let's do that. For those of you who haven't done it yet, it's so easy. Let's ask a question. Who is Sherlock Holmes? I'm sure you all know the answer. But let's use Sherlock. Now we're going to search all the search engines simultaneously. AltaVista, CNET, Excite, and it's going to instantly come back with information from all those search engines and put them in one simple window, one easy scrollable window with information about what the site is, what the name of that page is, and ranked by relevance to the response to the query that I sent out. So we can actually find things really fast. Look at the first one right at the top, the man who became Sherlock Holmes. I can click on it once and it tells me a little information about that, that, that link in that page. Or I can double click on it and it's going to launch my browser and take me right to that page. Incredibly quick. Now, as most of you probably know, Sherlock Holmes is a fictional character. So what's the site about who is Sherlock Holmes? It's about the man who played the character on the famous TV show in England. Who played Sherlock Holmes? Let me show you one other link. I found a really nice one here. Coolness Incarnate, Sherlock Holmes. And I thought this was cute because it's Steve's Sherlock Holmes website. <laughs> I didn't know Steve was a Sherlock Holmes fan. That's great. Now there's a tremendous amount of things we can do. We can search for people on industry standard LDAP servers and get back their name, their phone number, their email address. We can search for news.